from the first reading of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 38 to 39, we read the following. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourself fighting against God. There is this rule, they call it the 80-20 rule. Raise your hand if you ever heard of that rule. Probably people who are involved in the business world, <laughs> because they use it a lot in the business world. The 80-20 rule comes from a, an Italian sociologist and economist, Wilfred Pareto, and actually the principle is also known as the Pareto Principle, or more known as the 80-20 rule. And basically the principle, in short, is the following. So let's say you're looking at the total uh, result, the total outcome of some endeavor, whatever your endeavor it is. So you're looking now at the 100% of everything that came out from sales, from work, from whatever it is. You're looking at 100% of it. Okay, this is all came out, right? Out of the 100% of things that the outcome, you ready for this? 80% of this outcome 80% of what came out really was the fruit of 20%. 20% of the work, the time, the resources, whatever you want to talk about, 20% was what produced 80% of this 100%. So, a couple of examples. Uh, business management, 80% of the sales come from 20% of the clients. Fundraising, 80% of the money raised usually comes from 20% of donors. Uh, evangelization, we can apply this to evangelization. 80% of the fruit of evangelization that a parish does, that we do here at San Rita, comes from 20% of our work, of our resources, time, talent, treasure. So 80% really comes from only 20%. You could also apply that to your life. And I have, that's how I came across this 80-20 rule. So, 80% of the things that I do in this world that really make a difference in the world only comes from 20% of the work I do. So, it presents this question, that well, what if instead of 20% I'm producing 25%, 30%, 40%. What if I focus on that one thing that is given so much fruitfulness and do more of that and forget about the other things that I'm wasting my time and energy with? I came across this when, you know, I was, I, I went to a, a time in my, in my life, in my assignments within the diocese, where I was being sent to different parishes uh, to, to help heal, to help restore, to, to inspire a little bit more of a renewal, uh, uh, whatever crisis was going on in the parish that will send me. And then I began to, well, I'm, I don't want to waste my time with 80% of the things that really have no effect. Let me just focus on the thing that will produce the greatest fruit. That way I could help this community heal, uh, be restored as quick as it can be. And then once it's done, then I could go to another parish and another parish and I went from parish to parish, applying the principle of what is that which I should focus on to produce the greatest fruits in the shortest time possible so that then I could be sent to another parish and help them grow uh, and, and be renewed too. What would you say those things are? What would you say is that 20% thing that has the greater effect when you go into a parish? I try to figure it out but there's no, there's no perfect formula of knowing because what, what worked in one parish did not necessarily work in another parish. 
But what did always work was simply to discern the will of the Father. You see, that 20% that leads to 80% of the outcome, most likely is because that 20% it was in tune with the Father's will. And because it is the Father's will, because it is God's will, it is what will produce the greatest fruit. So I became an expert not in trying to figure out strategies of how to fix parishes, but rather I became a spiritual director, discerning the will of the Father. Where is the Spirit blowing? Where is the current of His power, of His strength? Where is His divine power leading? Mount those currents, and boy, you're going to be going really fast because you'll be carried by divine power. And so I was able to see the fruits of that. Discern, detect the Father's will, mount on it, and mount an entire community with it. And what usually takes three, four, five years for a parish to be able to do, we were able to do in one year. Why? That 80-20 rules. The principle that if you apply in the spiritual life, is the same. So we go back to the reading for which I started with. They were trying to get rid of the apostle, do this and that, and here came this great man uh, who said, for if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. That's a, a lot of the work that we do that in the end produces nothing. It's waste of time, waste of energy, waste of our lives. What things that come from human origin? But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. And you may even find yourself fighting against God. What if we find yourself working with God? How much fruitfulness will that have in your lives, in your families, in your communities, in the world. So we ask the intercession of the apostles, following this 80-20 rule, that we may be able to discern where is the Father's will, where is that 20% of what we do that is causing so much great, and what if we could increase it, submit ourselves ever more to the will of the Father, collaborate with Him, discern where the Spirit is blowing out the currents of divine power, and let fruitfulness speak for itself. We pray for the apostles to intercede for us, to pray for us, all the angels and the saints. And we pray that we may be able to discern the will of God and do it in accordance to his will as to have the greatest impact in the world.